All right, so we're playing Tezuka again. This is a rematch of the first rule set. Uh, I assume I can switch what decks I'm using. I should check. Um, but I'd like to use FF Tactics again, so let's look at those first. I was thinking a little about this, um, where he was using uh, these 8-7s. He used 8753 and 4487. So I'm going to want cards that line up decently against those. Um, I can't use 8-8 eight, eight corners, can I? Got to check the rule set again. Bring it up. Um, I don't think I can use 8-8 eight, eight corners. I don't think I can use 7-7 seven, seven, sevens. I don't think I can use 7-7 seven, seven corners at level 5. But let's bring them back up. Okay. Where is it? <clears throat> No 8-8 eight, eight corners, 7-7-7s, seven, seven, sevens, or 7-7 seven, seven corners at level 6, and no 7-7 seven, seven corners at level 5. So we're really pretty locked into 8-7s here. Maybe FF Tactics is not the way to go. What would play well against the 8-7s he's choosing? Maybe 8447? Does that exist? I should bring up a document where I can search the cards more easily. Give me a moment. I think I have that somewhere. No, I have no idea where. Oops, sorry. Um, okay, so I'll have to look on around. TC Center used to be good for this. Uh, 8437, not quite lining up how I want it to. I want the 4 to be at the bottom, unlike that FF9 card. Um, just thinking might be a little tricky for them to fight. So we're looking for 8x47. Seems like a card that would play well here. Might not exist. One six eight seven is a good card. Eight five one seven, not quite it. Huh. Might exist, but I didn't see it. All right, I liked the look of this one six eight seven. I'm surprised though. I will try to bring up a file that can help me search for a moment. I made this publicly available, so it's not like I have some uh, ridiculously unfair advantage here. Eight three four seven, FF twelve should have an eight three four seven. That's at level seven. 8447 doesn't exist. 8247 doesn't exist. 8147, Midgar Zalem. I put it in wrong. It's 8148. All right, that doesn't exist either. Okay, so we don't have that corner. Scratch is that plan. Um, hmm. All right, 2876 looks like a good card. Move into FF10. Does FF10 have it level 4? Man, I am taking too much time, but uh, what might be a nice card? 6247 could play well against the 8753. I can't have a 7-7 seven, seven corner here. Um, maybe I'll go with the up... Oh no. Uh, I'm locked in decks, I forgot. Uh, what does FF10 got to offer me? Hmm. Not a lot. Where's the, um, the... What does FF Tactics have to offer me? That's what we always care about. Uh, Maluda could be good. It's a good card. Let's try it, and Zalmo gives us our last corner. 
not thinking so much about lining up anymore, but we have not that much time left. I think that's a hundred some seconds, so yeah, not eleven. Um, so we need a level six that is FF10 or FF Tactics, and we sort of have something for each corner. So I'm kind of free to do what I want here. And I'm not breaking any sticks. There's no 7-7s, seven sevens, there's no 8-8s, eight there's no 7-7-7s. Seven seven sevens. Okay. So FF10. Hmm. 6-1-8-7. Pretty strong. So if I'm using that, maybe I cut Maluda. And I have room for another level 5. FF10 or FF Tactics. Scroll past both, I think. Where is FF Tactics at? There you are. Ah, Galagros. Do we bring Galagros? Probably not. Probably not. Um, where's FF10 at? Alright, we need another F of Tactics card, maybe. We only have one F of Tactics card. Oh, and we have very little time. So I actually gotta make a pick. And we're gonna do Galagros. Respect for Piggy Man. Long live the pig. Alright, he went for opposite 8 7 corners again. Different ones this time. Um, I actually have terrible coverage of the 8 7 in 1. Alright, so this hand did not come together. I have really bad coverage of both of them, actually. Huh. Hmm. All right, not the ideal hand. One idea I see is Galagros in seven, because that gives me some coverage. Uh, that gives me coverage of blank in nine, and it gives me coverage of a uh, Five, eight, seven, three, and one. Not full coverage, but some. Probably not enough. Do they have a directional weakness? I notice they have all the sixes to the left. So maybe, and maybe they have a down issue. So for instance, like I could imagine a line like Galagros and seven, they go five, eight, seven, three, and one. I go two, eight, seven, six, and four. They go seven, three, five, eight, and eight, and I go nine. They have five, though. It's not anything. I have five as well, though, so they can't go eight. They'd go two anyway with, like, a seven down, and they set up a big five threat. That's not very pleasant. So probably not that. Hmm. The fact that I'm recording, good. Um... I do see them having a potential... They drop off quickly in a bunch of directions, right? Sort of innate to the set. But down, they have a maximum of seven. So I kind of like to play against that, if I can. Um, They have both my eights covered, so it is hard for me to have potential safety except with um, 7635. So if I start with 5656 five, six in, in 7, and they go 5873 in 1, maybe I can play 6247 in 3. Then I have coverage of both sides of their starter. They have better coverage, of course. But I have coverage. I've had worse ideas. I probably need Galagras out of my hand, though. It's not, not a good card. Sorry, Figs. Your turn. 
They have a couple ways to capture it, but if they ever use 4, 3, 7, 6, and 4, then 2, 8, 7, 6, and 1 is safe. And if they ever use 5, 8, 7, 3, presumably I can recapture an 8, but even if I can't, 2, 8, 7, 6 will threaten a plus wall in 1. I can't take it immediately because they have the plus wall back in 2, but that might give me time to set up something elsewhere. Um, It might not actually here though. I don't really have like a big move for two. So I don't know. Probably not the best hand either. Should probably uh make better hands for this. Just one game today, I think. Uh, Tezuka said he didn't have a lot of time. Uh, where does this go in the records? This is for Yevans. Um, this is a rerun of the four through six game. And it's a Zup, Tezuka. Uh, the current score, by the way, is 1-1. One, one. Um, Tezuka has won, uh, he won his second rule set, I won my second rule set. Um, some strange games, just to recap briefly, uh, because, you know, it's his time, and that gives me time where I have to fill the time somehow. Uh, game one was this rule set, I put together quite a bad hand, probably a little worse than this one, and was in some trouble early, calculated a forcing line out where I walked into a big combo, but because it forced that combo and I calculated further, I spotted I had a tie at the end. So I took it and I held game one, but it was uh, pretty dangerous. Game two, um, game two, what happened? Ah, game two, I had a very nice random and he had a terrible random, but he got poo poo out of his hand immediately, which really helped and I was not able to apply significant pressure, and he found his way to a pretty comfortable tie and quite a bad random. I think he played that one really nicely. In game three, uh, it was his rule set again. I made a hand I thought was somewhat better because it's similar to a hand I was used to, but I did not pay enough attention to its side-to-side -side weaknesses. And after making a first move I think was fine and a second move that was a little suspicious, on move five of the game, my third move, I completely blew it. I spent the whole time calcul or a lot of the time calculating a move that did actually tie and decided it didn't. Really poor calculation there. And uh, in fact, one of the lines I think I said I was lost, I actually was winning after because I had a plus at the end and just didn't notice it. So really bad calculation there. I ended up making a losing move and Tezuka nicely found the win. Uh, but I think Tezuka played really good first two moves and applied real pressure against reasonable play from me. Like, I think my move one and three of the game, I think, were fine. Not great, but fine. And Tezuka managed to apply significant pressure against fine moves, which is really strong. And I, I crumbled. Uh, I noticed there's like five, eight, seven, three, and five here, which sets them up pretty nicely. But everything seems pretty easy to recapture for me. I'm not too worried about something like that. Uh, also, it gets a lot of power out of their hand. Anything where they use up some of the power cards early, I'm not too scared of. Game four, uh, I had a really horrible random, and I thought Tezuka made a really good first move. I think I made a nice reply, and when he made a pretty normal move three, I played a move that I thought kind of sacked a card to force a structure where I could hold a tie. And he spent a lot of time looking at various kind of clever ideas. I think he decided that structure was good for me, not just a tie, but good for me, and went for something creative. And I found a tie. I double-checked it to make sure it was a tie. I was going to play it. And then I thought, what would a good player do? They would look for more. And there actually was a win there. So the match is currently tied 1-1. One, one. And um, clearly the hand games have favored him. 
I think the random games have favored me, but I'm not sure I've played better in them. I was pretty lucky to have that win, and the I think both of us basically played well enough to hold a very difficult random, and in the second one, he happened to try something creative that didn't work. Which is one of the main ways I beat people, so, you know. I do not like how my hand lines up. I really will have to find a better hand for next time. Good thing I followed Stips, though. For a second, I was going to pick another FF10 card, but remember, I'd have to get two FF Tactics in there. Sorry about the uh, the scrolling when I look through cards. I personally find it annoying when someone scrolls quickly when I don't expect it to, like my head starts being unhappy um, when it happens at least a few times in a row. So I realize watching me pick cards could be visually unpleasant for some people. It used to not bug me, but it has, has started to bug me in the last few years. I'm all old. Okay. He's still thinking. Obviously, he has many reasonable moves, you know, something like 4, 3, 7, 6, and 3. Uh, maybe I can just take that. But, you know, there's moves in 1, there's moves in 7, there's moves in 5. I think probably shouldn't play in one of the sides. Like, none of the grab and... Well, in my face. Uh, well, now, hopefully, hopefully I was right, and this isn't a great move, but uh, certainly could be. He only has one threat in 8. And if he takes that threat, I can play 9. Yeah, I can play 9. So it is possible I can sort of just leave this alone. That I don't really need to play 8 myself. But I don't have somewhere else that is particularly appealing to play in. Um, if I use if I use seven six three five, then I don't have that safety recapturing in nine. But maybe that overworks his seven three five eight. Hmm. So if I go seven, six, three, five, and one, they can go, they could drop something five. I'm not too scared of that. Man, my two, eight, seven, six is dominated in a lot of spots. Maybe I should be looking to get that out of my hand. If I go 2, 8, 7, 6, and 8, I realize I'm switching tracks completely. But 2, 8, 7, 6, and 8, they've set up that they have one safety in 1. So if I go 2, 8, 7, 6, and 8, there's a good chance they go 1. And then I'm presumably playing 7, 3, 6, 3, 5, and 9. Um, so let's say they put 5, 8, 7, 3, and 1. Um, the question is, do I have play there. What could they put in 5? If they put 7, 3, 5, 8, then I have the combo with 6, 1, 8, 7, and I'm good in 2. If they choose 4, 3, 7, 6, then they have no downs at all, and I think I can just take it, and they have no more than a tie, take it from 6. If they go 6, 4, 3, 6, I have a plus in 6. They combo back from 3. I think that's a problem. If I go seven, six, three, five, and one, let's go back to that idea. 
I think they just go seven, three, five, eight, and two. If I go six, one, eight, so no, that's so powerful for the rest of the game. I need a use for two, eight, seven, six. That's really the uh, the worst card in my hand. Maybe it can go in three. But they've he set up safety for himself in one, and that's pretty powerful effect. I kinda need coverage of that. Oh dear, I'm not seeing anything at all. I do think this was a good move. That 4376 is killing man a lot of lines. Okay. What if I started with um, 7, 6, 3, 5, and 8? Then if they go 1, I can play something in 9, and at least they have limited stuff to attack. If they have to go 6, um, with a 7 down, I will have stuff to attack, and my 6, 1, 8, 7 hopefully is a decent sweeper. Maybe I should start with 6, 2, 4, 7. No, 6, 2, 4, 7 isn't good. They have too much threat in 5. So 7, 6, 3, 5, and 8. They go 1. I go 6, 2, 4, 7 in 9. They take it with 4, 3, 6, 7. And I have the combo in 5 with 2, 8, 7, 6. Because if 2, 8, 7, 6 is my final card and like 2 and 3 are the final squares, it's pretty good. So maybe I need to kill 5. Maybe 7, 6, 3, 5 is the way. They can also go 9. But I'm hoping that gives me time to go... either 5 or 6. I'm going to try it. I don't really... I think it's a card I want out of my hand, and I'm not sure what else to do. Sadly, it doesn't set up 5 for me. Um, one problem was all the lines where I kind of go in 1 to force 2. Like, if I play 2, 8, 7, 6 in 1, I maybe can force 4, 3, 7, 6 in 2. And then if I could go in 3, like, safely, it would be fine. But 6, 4, 3, 6 just wrecks me there. Here I'm hoping I can make 6, 4, 3, 6 kind of a dead card. Um, if they take, I think the main moves are 1 and 9 here. Uh, that's probably pretty straightforward. Um, if they play in 9, I have a couple bad ideas, <laughs> but I think they're bad. I wanted to play like 6, 2, 4, 7, and 2 maybe, but that's pretty bad. Uh... Hmm. So I think 6, 1, 8, 7 and either 5 or 6 would work. And if they go in 1, I'm hoping 6, 2, 4, 7 and 9 works. But it's very, it's very iffy. There's a good chance this is a loss. I think that was a really good move in 4 that I completely discounted. I am feeling um, much better about my game in general today than I was two days ago. That, like, I think the last few games got me in better form. But I'm also, I haven't picked hands where the numbers are combining to play well together. And Tezuka is picking hands where the numbers are playing nicely together. 
And so I really I gotta pick a better hand next time. If if I survive this one, obviously. Uh, seven three five eight and nine I think is more dangerous than five eight seven three and one. Could be wrong. Uh, so seven three five eight and nine. Say I go six one eight seven, in six. It's five five. I have one card on board to attack. If they do attack it with five eight seven three and five. Then I can play six two four seven in um, in three, and I might even win there. Now that's a tie. Um, they have the same in two or the plus in two, so my combo back doesn't hit anything. But like I think if they go five, I'm fine. If they go three. They combo me four three seven six. Oh god, I missed that. Um, or I saw that in one line, but not another. Four three seven six combos me. I think I'm just dead there. The six two four seven so irrelevant. Okay, so I can't go in, in six. What if I go in five? Six one eight seven and five. There's no combo this time. Uh, their main moves are definitely one or six. Uh, they should only go really three if they can set up a plus and two, and I don't believe they can. Therefore, one and six are the main moves. If they go six, um, they will lead six four, but I think I still have the tying idea in three. I think three still ties. So I think one is the threat. So I go seven, three, five, eight, and nine. I go six, one, eight, seven, and five. They go five eight seven three in one. It's five five. So I think there I could go six two four seven in three. Because if they combo me in th uh, in six, because they if they combo me in three, I combo back in two because their eight set me up to play against the six. Um, and if they have to go in two. Uh, they don't have the combo there, and I will have a capture at the end. So I think it is possible 7, 3, 5, 8, 9 that 6, 1, 8, 7, and 5 is my tie. There are other cards they could play in 1, but if they do so, I can take it with 6, 2, 4, 7. I will lead 6, 4. They won't have a combo on board, so I cannot lose. And if they play anything in 6, it's at worst 6 for them. And I can play six two four seven and three and two eight seven six as a sweeper. So I think after seven three five eight and nine, I believe six one eight seven and five is a tie. Because two eight seven six plays really well there. Like this is a card I was never able to play, kind of thing. But if I held on to and directed the game rightly, then it could be valuable. And just finding a use for the 6247, which is steamy garbage here. But can land in three in some of these lines where the bottom fills up. Uh, so the other key line is 5873 and 1. There, I'm hoping. I was hoping 6247 in 9 would work. This is the line where I noticed they have the plus wall, but 2876 combos back. And I'm hoping that's enough, but if they play it, I'll calculate that out more completely. Uh, there's not much time here, and I'd rather be ready to look at whatever they play. So it looks like they're going to go 7, 3, 5, 8, and 9, which I did think was the more critical move. Yeah. So now, if we were trying to look all smart, we would quick play. But the last time I tried to quick play for someone, uh, I really embarrassed myself. It was versus Deli, and we've just lost. I just missed that there was a plus wall against it. So let's just recheck. I think we're going to play 6, 1, 8, 7, and 5. Makes the score 5, 5. If they go in 1 with a card I can take, I will take it. I will be up 6, 4. I will have a tie. Um, if they go in 1 with a card I cannot take, I will go 6, 2, 4, 7, and 6. And it's 5, 5, so they must capture to win. If they capture with 4, 3, 7, 6, and 2, 
I just capture back, we're fine. I just capture the card they just played, we're fine. If they go in three, they walk into a combo, we're fine. Um, if they go in six, if they go with any card in six, I think I can just play six, two, four, seven in three. Um, they cannot be up more than six, four, and two, eight, seven, six sweeps that end game. And finally, um, if they go in three, they cannot set up a plus. So I will go in six, and two, eight, seven, six will dominate. And if they go in two, I go in one, it's fine. So five ties. There is the question, can we find a miracle win? But there, there isn't one. <laughs> so I think we're going to say we survived again here. I haven't uh, actually checked the, um, the previous game so much for... I checked my loss, but not my win or the, uh, the first two games for if I blew it. So I think after this game finishes, because Tezuka, I don't think it's time for any more, we'll, um, we'll go check that. Really need a better hand coming into the next time. And this is, of course, assuming I didn't miss something here. But the logic seemed sound to me. The key line is 5, 8, 7, 3, and 1, 6, 2, 4, 7, and 6. I need to have that plus at the end. Plus rule is on um, for that line to work. But so was the core reason for my move in 8 was some kind of, if they went in 9, I'd have some kind of attack in 5 or 6? Um, now 6 didn't work, but... I think five has. Clearly my strategy here was use the best cards, the FF Tactics cards first, and save those useless FF10 cards for later. Yeah, you need a better hand next time. I just really, I, I don't think I have any serious chance to, uh, to play for a win with these non-coordinated hands that I'm making in card select. This was really a, one of my downfalls as a player, was I started relying too much on card select. Now, I had better instinct for card select then. You know, these hands have been messy. But it is also a lot easier to make card select when the stipulations aren't as significant. Because um, looking at decks, you don't immediately see all the synergies that are going to happen. And without the deck stipulations, you can kind of just pick various power cards that you know work together. And with the stipulations, um, you have to look for spots. And like, he's using a bunch of power cards plus 6436, six, which is a very interesting choice. And has played really well for him. So I think is a nicely coordinated choice and has played well in both games. Um, but I think he has done the work and is getting a courting advantage. And deservedly so. So I gotta, I gotta try to match that. Um, this is a best of five. Score is currently tied 1-1. One, one. Ties do not count. Let's look at Tezuka's account. 56k. So this is basically when Turd signed up. Um, let's see, TTAC 5, Triad Wars 4, uh, Clan Wars 5. There's some SE Zell. There's a bunch of uh, early, there's an early Occult fan article talking about Tezuka as like the exciting new kid on the block, and that was around this era of Zell, Triad Wars 4, TTAC 5. But then you can also see the Sephiroth quarter finalist. Um, there's a Triad Wars 7 semi finalist. I ended up winning that tournament, so I have a soft spot for that one. Tezuka was on the other side of the bracket. Um, and he's just, he's been a, a really strong player across lots of eras. And I think of him as kind of an old-timer because he started well before I did. But it is funny to go back into the Occult fan and see the actual old-timers call him the new kid on the block just a couple of years before I was one of the new kids on the block. 
I do wonder why there was such an influx of talent around 2008. Because so many of the, the greats, and it's not just that there were a lot of tournaments after that, so they got to rack up results. You know, the people 2008 onwards put up more consistent results than anyone had before over significant amounts of tournaments, um, with the exception of Deli and Seto. But, and you know, like Kamikaze and Sujiro are in the conversation with a lot of them, but like, you know, Jimbo, Nightwish, MC, Slash of Time. Um, I think Koner shows up around when Tezuka does, maybe a little earlier, but similar time frame. So you had this middle class of like Koner, um, Tezuka, Meta, Turds, and then you had this kind of 2008-9 class of the Polish brothers, Yojimbo, myself, Slash of Time. And I wonder why, if there's any reason why that much talent hit them. Right, he's picked up a card. Goes 6436. Six. The game plan is 6247 and 3. I will input the move for the database. Uh, incidentally, like obviously at this point the game is just calculating out the end, but uh, this is, I think, a very uh, kind of the thematically correct move in that it gets a card out of his hand that is not good. Similarly, my, my tying plan here is also to get a card out of my hand that is not good. Um, and I think we'll play again tomorrow. Obviously, this is like a month ago or whatever when this comes out for you. But uh, for me, it is tomorrow. Pleased that I saw that five was a tie against nine. Um, when you've made your third move and you see a move you think is the most threatening and you're quite confident it's a tie before it's made, I think that's pretty good calculation. So I think that is a, a good sign for me. Obviously, like, I am a very good calculator, so, like, what I think is pretty good calculation, I don't mean, like, that other people should be expected to do that. Um, but calculation is a real strength of mine and something I pride myself on being one of the best ever at. Uh, I should, uh, I need to bring the game up on my other computer so I can post it. Though I suspect Tezuka will post it as it is his rule set. Let's just make sure I have it up there. All right. And we can play our time. So good game. Uh, more comfortable, I think, than the prior, or at least I felt more like I had it under control, um, despite, you know, obviously not being a game where I successfully put any pressure on him. So I guess we'll close this window and switch over to the solver. I have to put my hands, so this will take me a moment. Um, and see what it has to say about some of the games. I guess we'll check this one first, because if you're watching this, it's probably the one you're most invested in, uh, as you just saw it. So I have 5656, 7635, 6187, 6247. Did not play well, but I didn't play to set it up to play well, to be honest. And in his hand, he had 6736. Six. Really nice move in four. 7358, 5876, and 4376, which played very annoyingly well. Right, I'll post the game because he hasn't yet. Uh, but we'll switch you over to the solver. See all games. Ty versus Tez, his first set, and the move order is seven, four, eight, nine, five, six, three, one, two. All right. So I started here, which certainly is a move. 
about all we can say about it. Um, takes a little while to do move ones, but early returns are he could not play anything that would put himself in trouble. This is very low pressure, but may not have been losing or anything. He goes in four, and this is much higher pressure. Uh, immediately I was behind this game. Uh, 16 of my remaining moves lose. Um, clearly put him on the front foot and me on the back foot. I tried here. Did I find one of the 12 moves? I did! Uh, so he has only five ties here. He has 19 losses. Um, but that doesn't mean this is actually real pressure. Because if we look at where the ties are, basically anything in one or nine ties, and that means in practical terms, I'm pretty much never winning this game. Um, now, I didn't um, fully calculate this move out, but I thought I could tie with this. This was my plan. And it does tie. And he has to either find that he does want to capture it and walk into the combo, and then he can hold the tie after, uh, which is a little tricky to find, or he has to find a move in two. So this was actually a pretty good idea. Um, Ah, he's smart. He's saying in the chat that he really wanted to get 6, 7, 3, 6 out of his hand. It's a very smart point. You know, I'm starting just directing the game down left. That card played badly against it, and I think that is a, a clever idea. Um, uh... All right, um, so he went here, and I saw six, one, eight, seven, and 5. There were other ties. Um, this in 2 was actually a tie. That was another idea I mentioned. Uh, that's fun to know. I didn't really check it seriously. And here in 3, probably never going to find that one. Nope, that loses. That wasn't the move it said tie. What's the move it said tie? Ah, this makes more sense. Okay, that that's much more findable. Uh, sort of, don't know if, I don't think I mentioned this one, but it did fleet across my brain, but I, I did not seriously consider it. I was obviously on the actual move. I spent the entire time thinking about this because I had done most of the thinking in advance. We play here and here, a bunch of moves tie, but I went with the one I had planned. Um, I guess the cutest tie is here. That's fun. Didn't consider it. Uh, yeah, so I think that was a pretty good game. I think he had the advantage there. And let's let's look at the game I let's look at the game he held, I think, with a difficult random. And then maybe I'll record the uh, the March, March power rankings, which will come out much sooner than this video, but uh, just to give a sense of what, what the time scale on these is. Uh, March is not quite finished yet, and there's a couple things that could change things a little, but I think it's close enough to lock in place. I won't feel bad about recording it in advance. All right, so let's boot up the, uh, the next game. All right, so hopefully you can see his hand's kind of a mess. This card obviously sucks, and the hand has some kind of weak play. So I think he did a good job just getting rid of this immediately and saying, I can recapture this. I now threaten to play something in four, and this card that just plays really badly against your hand is gone. I went here, which makes a threat in eight, and I thought I had good L's versus everything. I think he correctly saw he doesn't want to go into an L with a seven facing up. It is very easy for me to set up play against that, for instance, something like this. It's kind of annoying for him because I have threats in both 4 and 5. Um, maybe I have better here, I don't know. We haven't checked. No, I don't have a win, but I think I could apply pressure. He went here, which I thought was a good version, and I couldn't find something I really liked in 6, so I went in 5, because I saw he couldn't set up anything in 2 from 1 or 3, and if he combos in 6, I have to combo back in... Uh, in four. Or specifically, if he combos this way in six, I want to combo back here. If he combos this way in six, now I can combo back here because he doesn't have the combo in one. 
Well, if he started this way and then I comboed, I would walk into this. Um, so I had to order it right, but I, I thought, thought it was reasonable. It was. I think he went here and we headed for a tie. The exact moves were... I played in six. He went in three. I went in two. And we have a tie. All right, so that looks like a pretty well-played game. Uh, good starter by him. I really thought his hand was bad. And let's look at my win, because you already saw my loss, and that was depressing enough. I want to see if I did, in fact, hold this game, because I thought I found a clever idea to try to hold it, but I don't know if it actually worked or I just got really lucky. Uh, make sure I haven't missed anything in chat, so I have not. Uh, pretty miserable hand here. But hopefully, hopefully it did work. So we went here, and I tried this opposite corner play, just creating a little difficulty for him and getting a card out of my hand I didn't like. Um, okay. So apparently this is non-losing. That's great to hear. He went here just sort of locking in one, and I don't have safety in three, and I don't have anything in six that sets up all that well, though I did consider six. I have one tie. One tie. There's one move that doesn't lose here. I did not find it. I must play here to tie. Now, I did find the idea of going here later, but this shows this position is... Very difficult. Don't really blame myself for that. I think the random is kind of a nightmare, and you'd find this out of a lot of lines. Against his starter, it just finished looking at his starter. Um, I had nine different ties, but I bet, I mean, I played one of them, and I bet all of them had kind of this kind of very narrow path. So I didn't see that 8915 landed so well in five till later. I went here, and I thought I tied against six, and indeed I do. Um, you know, something like this is a tie. Or, in fact, a win here. So it was possible for him to lose. Because he doesn't really have something he can put here, because I have the combo. I don't think I saw that, actually. I don't think I saw that this position was a win. This is why he got scared. So I undervalued how strong this idea was. Um, I also thought he could go in four or maybe five. Um, so the win is in five. I thought maybe the point of five would be, it would be like this, except... Um, but I should have the same number of cards, right? I have two and six instead of, uh, or I have one, three and six instead of two and six, right? If we flip the order of these, um, in this one, I have two and six. In this one, I have three and six. I guess it makes some difference that I have five, just because it's a, not trivial for him to get it back. Uh, so what is the win here? All right, it's five, one, nine, eight, and five. So it's saying those squares are going to get filled, but I can do it in the way that is worst for your hand. And holding on to six, five, seven, eight is pretty valuable here. So say I do something like, uh, say this, and here is his win. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't help to hold on to eight, nine, one, five. Because if I hold on to eight, nine, one, five, you know, I think that still should work because if I take, he has set up this plus wall that makes sure he combos it back. Yeah, all right, that's tricky to find. He did not find it. I got lucky. He played here, and I found this move, which apparently not the only win. This also worked. Cool. No, that didn't work. That loses. Yeah, that move looked ridiculous. Okay. Sometimes I just trust and I don't actually like check what it said for sure. All right, two to five wins and four to four. All right, this wins. Still doesn't make immediate sense to me. Um, why would it win? Oh, I missed that I set up the plus in uh, five. Okay, uh, just totally didn't see the plus. Cool. 
in that case, probably has to block five, because as we've seen as, as the game continued when I played here, he had just no play against this card in five. So setting up that card, he probably has to block immediately, saying just without calculating much. And this he can't capture back from eight, and this he also can't capture back from eight. So either way, something like this happens. Hmm. Didn't see the idea. Uh, now I gotta do this right. I take it this way. Alright. Hmm. Interesting game. Uh, don't blame myself at all for being lost here. I think this is just a horrible random to hold, and if I made a good trap against this move, that's, that's about as well as I'm going to do. This would be a very strong move to find. Yeah. All right, so uh, hopefully I come better prepared for next time, and uh, yeah, it's been a good final so far. Been, I think, pretty well played. This last game we just played, I think, is the game I'm... Maybe this game we're looking at the AI of is my happiest one. Obviously, you feel good about wins. That was a very tough game to defend, and I'm glad I gave myself good chances. But uh, this last game, I think, despite, again, having a bad hand made, um, I think I played it the most comfortably and the best calculated of any of the games so far. So, good sign, good sign. Really want to be playing well moving into Triad Wars. And uh, see you next time.